My name is Antonio Fortunato and I work at the European Astronaut Center as Deputy Team Lead for Crew Operations. Let's start with a few facts about the ISS. The ISS is an incredible vehicle and the ISS program is an incredible endeavor, not just in the history of human spaceflight, but also in the larger development of human history. The ISS is the single largest man-made object that was ever put into space. If you measure its size from the aft end to the forward end, you would get about 70 meters. And uh, likewise, if you measure its width from the starboard to the port end of the integrated truss, you would get 100 meters, which actually means that uh, if you were looking at the ISS from above, you would have roughly the same surface of a football field. The ISS is also the spacecraft that has been inhabited for the longest time. What is most important, though, about the ISS program is its multinational component. The ISS is the result of an unprecedented cooperation between five entities. We have, of course, the United States and Russia as the leading spacefaring nations, but we also have a number of European countries represented by the European Space Agency, as well as Japan and Canada. The ISS is a, is a really significant program. It's a really significant spacecraft. And uh, just to give you a term of comparison, the spacecraft that is the second biggest and that has been inhabited for the longest after the ISS is the Mir Space Station. The Mir Space Station was, for instance, only 120 tons, while the ISS is uh, about 450 tons in mass. What it actually means is that uh, if we were using the most powerful rocket that was ever built, which is the Saturn V, it would take about one launch to bring up to space the entire space station Mir. I'm talking, of course, now just in terms of mass and not in terms of, of volume. While to bring up the International Space Station, it would take about three flights. Of course, uh, the ISS was not put in space uh, with the Saturn V, but it required a much uh, wider effort. It required a number of uh, space shuttle flights as well as a number of flights of the Russian Proton rocket. It also required about 175 EVAs just for the assembly and the maintenance of the station. And this is something that uh, is important to remember when putting the ISS uh, into perspective. Now, Europe has contributed quite a bit to the ISS as a program. And uh, some of the most uh, notable contributions were in terms of uh, hardware and modules that were actually built by European industry in Europe. The most well-known and the most significant of uh, Europe's contribution to the ISS is the Columbus module. The Columbus module was uh, brought to space uh, in uh, February 2008 during the STS-122 mission, and it actually represents the only module that is attached to the ISS and that was built in Europe and also operated in Europe. Columbus is actually operated uh, out of the Columbus Control Center in uh, Munich. You can see in the picture Columbus as it looks like from the outside. You have actually here a picture from the second EVA of uh, STS-122. And uh, the astronaut that is working outside Columbus here is German astronaut Hans Schlegel completing the external outfitting of the module. Columbus is a scientific laboratory and uh, it hosts a wide number of uh, facilities that can be used to perform research in uh, different fields. We have uh, a lot of possibilities to perform specifically human 
life science experiments. We have facilities for performing electroencephalograms, electrocardiograms, we can do echography, we can centrifuge blood, all the basic facilities that are necessary to perform even relatively complex uh, scientific experiments in uh, human life science are present in the Columbus module. Now, one additional contribution that was provided by Europe is the automated transfer vehicle. The automated transfer vehicle was fully designed and built in Europe. It is launched into space on board an Ariane 5 rocket which is actually launched from the Guyana Space Center in uh, uh, French Guyana. And the ATV is a cargo vehicle. It is used to move dry cargo as well as water and fuel to the ISS. And what is also important about the ATV is that it provides a propulsion capability for the station. Now, it is true that the station on its own would have such capability. For instance, the, serv mo the service module has its own engines and uh, it can use those engines to reboost the orbit of the station when this is required. Of course, the service module is uh, also one of the oldest modules of the International Space Station and uh, we want to preserve the lifetime of its engines as much as possible. What that means is that uh, whenever there is a cargo vehicle attached, for instance, to the aft docking port of the service module, then we would like to use the engines of this vehicle to do the reboosts. And the ATV has performed this function more than once. You have to remember, in fact, that the uh, orbit of the station decays by about uh, two kilometers per month. So the need and the necessity to perform reboost is actually something that uh, is required quite often. One additional reason why we might have to use the engines of either the service module or the progress vehicle or the ATV to change the trajectory of the station is to avoid a collision or a probable collision with uh, a piece of orbital debris. This is actually a problem that uh, is happening more and more often and uh, it is important to have uh, a capability to steer the ISS away from the danger of a collision. You can easily imagine that uh, depending on the size of the object colliding with the ISS, the consequences of such collision could be catastrophic. Now you see here in the picture the ATV as it looks like from the outside. This is actually the way it looks like uh, looking from the space station to ATV during either docking or undocking. It is a cargo vehicle and uh, we use the space and the mass capability available in ATV as much as possible to bring to the space station new equipment, new experiments, new food and uh, in a few words everything that is necessary to continue work and uh, life on board the ISS. Now, a lot of people would stop here and say, okay, that's it. Europe's contribution to the ISS was just the Columbus module and the ATV. Well, this is not quite correct. As a matter of fact, Europe has also built a number of modules that uh, are currently operated directly by NASA. One of such modules is Node 2. You see here a picture of the outside of Note 2 in a very early phase of the space station. Note 2 was actually flown in uh, 2007. And uh, Note 2 is a very important element of the ISS. It is indeed a node, which actually means that uh, it presents a number of uh, berthing ports where additional modules or vehicles can be connected. So if you look at this picture, the berthing port that is facing us is the one that is uh, starboard of Node 2. And this is where in 2008 uh, Columbus got attached. Uh, likewise, a little bit later, the Kibo module was attached on the opposite port, so on the port side of Node 2. And uh, on the forward end of the module, 
there is the so-called PMA or pressurized mating adapter and this is something that uh, was used in the past to allow the space shuttle to dock to the ISS. But the Note 2 also has berthing ports on the Nadir and the Zenit side. And those berthing ports are normally used by vehicles like Sinus or SpaceX, the Dragon or HTV to connect to the space station. So the Note 2 is quite a vital module in the space station operations nowadays. As Note 2 was built by European industry and it is operated by NASA, so it is for Node 3. Node 3 was launched in 2010 on board a space shuttle and uh, it was connected to the station. At the moment it is connected to the port, berthing port of the Node 1. The Node 3 has uh, very specific functions. It is at the moment the gym of the space station. In the Note 3 we have the American Treadmill or T2 as well as the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device which is a quite impressive piece of equipment used to perform the equivalent of weight lifts on the station. Of course you cannot lift uh, weights in a weightless environment but uh, the air through um, a series of vacuum cylinders can actually recreate the same effect. What is also important about Node 3 is that it contains the ISS toilet, the WHC, the water and hygiene compartment, and part of the equipment that's necessary to transform the urine into from a waste into drinkable water. The ISS is actually uh, the very first vehicle where it is possible to recycle the urine in such a way to use it not just as technical water but also as uh, drinking water for the astronauts on board. As uh, some of the astronauts put it, the WHC and the systems that are connected to the WHC make sure that yesterday's coffee is turned into tomorrow's coffee. One additional contribution that uh, Europe has made uh, to the International Space Station program is the Cupola. The Cupola was launched uh, together with Node 3 in 2010. It is connected to the Nadir facing port of Node 3 and uh, serves two major functions. The first one is to support uh, robotic operations. Up to the installation of Cupola and uh, Node 3, the astronauts had to rely entirely on the images that they were getting on their monitors. The so-called robotic workstation was installed in the US lab and there was no way for the astronauts to easily go out of a window and see what the arm was really doing. Well, after the installation of the cupola, this is finally possible. So the main robotic workstation is now installed in the cupola. Now, the second purpose of the cupola is to serve as an observation post for um, Earth observation. Almost all the wonderful pictures that uh, have been taken by the astronauts in the past four years have been only taken from the cupola. It is just a wonderful place to uh, take those pictures. And actually, for the astronauts, it's just the best place to look at the Earth and to reflect about the meaning of space exploration, their place in history and so on.